don't know a lot about the hydraulics on this system, but read a little bit online and I uh, think I've got a little bit more information than the last time I was out here. And of course, the first thing I want to do in diagnosing a hydraulic problem is finding out whether or not I've got any hydraulic fluid in the system. And that in itself, uh, it's going to take some figuring. So, I'm thinking this square plug right here on the seat is my hydraulic fill point. And I take this cap out, this is where I fill the hydraulics. The system on this tractor is basically the transmission um, case is also the hydraulic reservoir. So, the hydraulic fluid does double duty. It's your transmission oil and your hydraulic fluid all in one. So I believe this is your fill. And then when it comes to checking the level, I believe it has something to do with removing a plug from the side, which I'm looking here on the side and I see over here, this area, we get a plug here, get a plug here, and we get a plug here. Hmm. I also get a little plug here. These two lines are the two lines that run over to the hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump is run off the motor, so we have live hydraulics all the time, uh, right here. And we got two lines, and you can see one line is thicker than the other. So this larger line, this is going to be your suction line. This is the fluid traveling to the pump. And then the smaller line is going to be your pressure line. That's going to be the pressurized fluid coming back. So I see that this smaller line goes into this top casting here. So logic would tell me that there's a high probability that if you remove this plug or this plug, that you're going to be on the pressure side of the system. So that might be, these might be test ports where you would hook up a pressure gauge to check hydraulic pressure out of the pump, maybe. Uh, you know, the possibility is that I'm noticing that this flat part right here, there's four holes, maybe there's actually uh, the ability to put a second valve body on this location right here, kind of like the way that one's mounted, and then you might have maybe hydraulic remotes, not sure. But that leads me to believe this lower plug right here, the larger one might be your check, level check plug. So let me see if I can't get that plug out and see if any fluid comes out. Well, this plug was not overly tight. It wasn't seized in there. Not getting any drips. All right, nothing. Nothing coming out of there. So, man, my pinky's too big to go in there and really check. But I could push down enough below the threads to feel there's nothing even with the threads there. Hmm. He thinks there is little or no hydraulic fluid in there. Or it's low anyways. I mean, I guess this reservoir is like huge. I forgot how many gallons this thing takes according to the specs, but I guess it could be pretty darn low and still have some in there. I mean, I think this is actually down to here is even the reservoir, so I can imagine how much fluid that would be. Anywho, uh, I think what I want to do now is pull this top plug right here and see if I can't look down and see any fluid. It's funny, this, this is not the original seat. I don't know where the seat came out of. It's kind of a modern tractor seat. It's even got a plastic tray here on the back, which I think originally had a door that snapped shut, and I think the owner's manual would go in here for your tractor or something like that. Um, but it's on this frame. 
The frame is designed to slide forward and back for adjustment. The frame looks original. And to take that frame off, it looks like you had to take those screws out of the back there and then maybe the whole frame slides off of whatever it anchors to in the front. I'm not sure, but I was just looking at this seat and I saw this catch right here and it looks like there's a lever on the other side. So you can actually maybe flip this whole seat back. Seat cushion tilt. This side's unlocking, but the other one isn't. Let me see if I put the camera down, if I can get it. Okay, upon closer examination, I see that all this lever does is allow you to tilt the seat. So, there you being that, push down on it, there we go. The seat's tilted forward a little bit, and then you can tilt it up like that. So that doesn't do much for me. Apparently the seat's not designed to flip up. Uh, let's see. Well, even though it's not designed to flip up, it looks like maybe just taking this bolt out and the uh, bolt on the other side, maybe the whole seat comes out. That might be easier to do than dealing with the frame. Well, although I'm not sure what that frame even is hooked onto in the front there. I got a feeling that the frame probably has screws in the front that I can't see that you're gonna get to by sliding this back far enough which yeah there they are you can see the screws there so I gotta slide this back further and get that those two screws out in the back two screws out if I want to take the whole frame off uh, let me see if I've got the right size Allen head wrench for that ooh yeah that was the right move taking that uh, seat completely off with the bracket because now I can clean this dirt off of here and uh, now looking at this I see this port right here is fitting that's open I think that's supposed to be a, a vent I think that's supposed to be a vent and I believe like uh, if you got problems priming this pump I actually saw a tip where one guy he was talking about it he made a connection at the vent fitting underneath the seat and uh, actually put a few PSI of pressure in there and that actually pushed, forced the, uh, the fluid into the pump to prime. And it's supposed to be a quick and easy, mess-free way to get your pump to prime if you're having trouble. But, methinks some dirt may have gotten in there because this is filthy. Well, now that's better. All right, so let's see. I think what I'll do is I'll open up this plug. All right, I loosened the plug a little bit and then I blew the dirt away. Because uh, when you first break it free, some more dirt that the rag couldn't get to comes out and you blow that away and then that way minimizes the amount of dirt that might fall in when you open up like so. Oh, hey, a dipstick. Cool beans. Well, now it makes it pretty obvious what the proper level would be. Uh, does anybody notice what I notice? That it's dry? Oh, wait, a little tiny drip right there. One tiny drip. Let me get my rag so I can clean it off and redip it. Ah. All right, here's what I don't know right now, which is uh, I don't know whether or not the proper level on the dipstick is to the full level or the full line when the dipstick is just inserted like this or is it the proper level when it's to the full line when it's screwed in like so which that seems to be as far as it bottoms out hmm. doesn't matter because Still looks like I got nothing on there. Ooh, I could see fluid in there. See when I shake the tractor, you can see it sloshing around. So it's not bone dry. Well, looks like Daisy May here is gonna need some fluids. So, uh, I didn't bring any with me today because I'm not quite convinced. I've got five gallons of just straight 
track the hydraulic fluid. Good old Napa brand. And I'm not quite sure whether or not I can use that in this because this tractor uses, as I was saying earlier, the fluid is actually also the transmission fluid. So if this was just straight transmission oil uh, and it wasn't used for hydraulics, there would be almost like gear oil in there. And since this is the combination, I don't know whether or not I can use just straight hydraulic fluid in here. I think the stuff they use, uh, what you're supposed to use, I think, is what you get at the International Harvester case dealer, and I think it's called High Trans, Hydraulic Transmission, High Trans, but I'm not sure. So while I'm here, I'm going to take out this little tube, which I believe is a breather, and see what the deal is with that, if it's clogged or whatever. All right, I took it out and checked that hole is just basically a hole just it's just open to the top of the reservoir so again I'm pretty sure this is a breather but look at look at this see what I'm looking at oh I was hoping you could tell me what it is looks like earwax <laughs> don't know what that is it's nasty but it's completely clogging this vent so I don't know if that's that might even be rotten leaves for all I know nasty stuff well, it was just a tap tap tapping on this thing and a bunch of dirt came out so yeah that's just completely clogged with dirt and debris and I mean that could give you hydraulic problems I mean they didn't put a breather on here for no reason breather is also obviously got a uh, important job I would imagine that as the hydraulic level drops if you don't have anything to equalize atmospheric pressure in there it's going to create a vacuum situation and maybe cause problems with the pump not being able to properly uh, pump yeah just a theory yeah nothing real mysterious about this this is just a double female fitting and it was just completely clogged still some little bit of crap in there but so, I wonder what's supposed to go on this end. Looks like somebody grabbed that sucker with pliers and crushed it. Maybe they squeezed it with vice grips to get it out. It's only brass. I'll tell you one thing, they did this uh, paint job after they squashed it. <laughs> but I'm going to have to look on the parts diagram. There might be a clue as to what's supposed to be on the top here. If there's some sort of little breather cap that goes on here that would let air in and out but keep debris from getting in there. Or is there supposed to be a hose attached to that, that the hose runs off to an area where it can breathe but not get all gunky? I don't know. Don't know. I do know I want to cover that and not leave it open to the rain in case we get any rain before I come back. 